This video is filled to the brim with tips and tricks, all killer, hardly any filler. The interior for the cottage is done, let's take a quick look at the finished result. Hi, my name is Gert, welcome to Dark Matter Workshop. Making terrain, making buildings is awesome and all, however, it is when we make the small little details, the little do hickeys here and there, that we can tell a narrative, that we can really give character to a terrain piece. I chopped up the video in all the different little projects that I did. There are timestamps down below for easy reference. A special thanks to my Patreons for the support. I want to welcome Zudi and Stefan de Klerk. Links if you want to support in the description below, also links to my other social media. Of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, you know what to do by now, but I'm gonna keep repeating it. Let's go! The chimney was built and painted in exactly the same way as the chimney was in the cottage video, minus the moss of course. I can highly recommend watching that video for more details. The chimney is in use, of course, so soot and grime have formed. Simple dry brush with black all over the interior and on the top of the chimney. I crafted a hook system for the cauldron out of 1mm plate styrene, attached with super glue and painted in a metal color with a dark brown wash. The floor is made out of 1mm balsa wood sheet, cut to the measurements of the cottage weathered with a steel brush and cut into single planks to give a more weathered appearance. PVA is the adhesive of choice. Use fast drying PVA, I'm gonna keep repeating it. And then it's simply a matter of gluing the balsa wood floor to the base. We are going to need a fire pit, something to contain the coal, so I made one out of cardboard. Glued it into place and fill it with super glue, baking soda and these little rocks to represent the coal. The paint job for the floor was a brown base color with a dark brown wash and then I added a black wash to give more contrast and to make the floor look more aged and weathered. The walls got a grey dry brush and a selective wash of sepia to simulate some dirt and grime. Back to the fire pit, black base coat light yellow in the center of the pit and then red orange within the yellow circle i used a light gray to simulate the ashes and a black dry brush on the lumps of coal and then finally a black wash to tone down the yellow and to tie in the ashes with the coal. First small project, the furniture. I based the measurements on the size of the cottage. Materials are primarily 1 and 2 mm balsa sheets cut into strips of various sizes. Out comes the thrusty Lego jig. This makes assembly a breeze, PVA glue and Bob's your uncle. If you were to disturb the shape somehow, simply press it again in the jig and allow it to dry. First pieces of furniture I'm building is a couple of bookcases. I glued in the back and I added a couple of shelves. Time for texture. With a simple needle tool I press in the lines to represent the wood grain all over the model. 
Second piece of furniture was a cupboard, cut, glued and assembled in the same way as the bookcase. In this cupboard I want a hollow area for some scrolls, some books I don't know yet. And for the other side I want some drawers. Strips of 1mm balsa wood and some small beads for the feet and the handles. I also made a second one, a smaller one, because eentje is geentje. Every cottage needs a little table. For this I'm going to use 2mm thick EPVC. I have it lying around. I know it takes texture like a champ, so why not? The entire surface is textured with my hobby knife. First I carve in some of the lines to represent the planks. And then with my knife I can cut some little pieces out at the sides to make it a little bit more rough. And then with a steel brush and my needle tool I can apply a bunch of texture in the EPVC. I glue on four pieces of styrene to represent the legs of the table. And then for further detailing a strip of cardboard with little pieces of styrene rod. And finally I also made a couple of little chairs. Same materials, glued into the Lego jig. Nice and easy. This is the collection. For the painting I started with a beige brown base coat. After drying an Icax Earthshade wash. Again a beige brown dry brush over all the wood. And finally a black wash. I made a couple of different kind of books but they all started from the same base material. Scraps of EPVC or Fomex or extruded polystyrene if you will. These were beveled to one side with my knife and then I used some sanding paper to get a nice convex shape to one side. I made several of these, glued them together until I had a whole bunch. These got a really simple paint job, base colors in red, blue, dark grey. Before we continue with the paint job, the second type of books, same base material, but this one I wrapped between a piece of cardboard to represent a cover, cut to size, and the EPVC was weathered with my hobby knife to simulate the different pages. Again EPVC for the open book, I modeled the EPVC with my hobby knife, sanding paper and a file to get the desired shape that I wanted. These two shapes were then glued to a piece of cardboard to represent the backing of the book. Here I have a bunch of fancy little books. Time to lay down some paint for the open book. Paper was painted with an old white color with a sepia wash. And then I scribbled on some lines with black paint try to do my best to make it somewhat even. I also made a couple of magical symbols to the side, not too happy with the result, so I glued over a red painted bookmarker. And then a bunch more washes with Ajax Earthshade and Sepia to make it really old and used. The scrolls are made out of painter's tape. This paper has a nice texture to it, which I think works great for scroll-like objects. Some of the pieces I glued in to a styrene bar measuring 1mm thickness to make some more fancy scrolls. Simply a matter of adding a little drop of glue and rolling up the paper. I did some detailing with a little blob of green stuff, attached with my sculpting tool, and painted red. Mm -hmm. 
The paper itself was simply painted with a bunch of sepia washes, thin down and normal. I also glued in a pattern that I printed off on the open scroll to give it a bit of a, a magical appearance. Much easier than simply painting it on. For the candles we are going to grab back to the classics pieces of toothpicks and ear swabs. However, instead of using hot glue for the dripping candle, we are going to use PVA glue. I apply this in about three different layers, building up each time. This is a bit more subtle and I find a bit more realistic. The wicks are simply thin metal wire pieces glued in at the top of the candles. And then to make the flames, I use a little blob of green stuff. I'm wearing gloves as to not leave any fingerprints. And it's simply a matter of attaching the green stuff to the piece of metal wire and sculpt a little flame. Paint job is quite easy for the candles. After a grey primer I start with an old white base coat, a sepia wash, for the flames a light yellow with a with the tips painted in an orange. And then a re-highlight with the old white to get some depth going on in the candles and to get some highlights. Magic potions and jars or the answer to the question what happens when you glue beads to other beads. The little jars are made from capacitors. Be careful when working with these little electronic components. Those are acids inside and they can and will burn your skin. I pushed in the needles to make the top as flat as possible. And then to make sure that we have no leakage, I drown the top in super glue and add a little styrene top. I'm also going to need a little bowl, so I cut off the end of this plastic vial that used to contain little beads. For the paint job for the little jars, I started with a grey primer, a stone grey base coat all over the models. And then simply a black wash applied dirty with the excess removed with a damp brush. And that's it. The little bowl was painted in exactly the same fashion and then filled up with some dried herbs. For the magic potions I started with several different base coats, a purple ink. Uh, carmine red and a bunch of greens on the smaller ones, a dark and a light. With these base colors I paint slightly over half of the little potions and then with black I fill in the rest of the model, making sure to get a nice sharp line where the black meets the other base colors. I also make sure this line is as level or horizontal as possible. And then I start reapplying the base colors, start here with a medium green. At the edge between the black and the green to start building up the colors again. I want to make sure my lighter colors are at the top of the base color. And then I can have a nice gradient, more to dark at the bottom. Don't use fancy tools or techniques. Just use your eye to make a nice gradient. I then give a layer of Green Stuff World's Bile, which has a little bit of gloss varnish in it. The purple potions are dry brushed with an old white. So the little facets come out. Then these are filled in with purple ink, making sure to not touch the white lines. Just fill it in over the entire model. Finally a layer of glass varnish and this is the result. Time to get working on the cauldron. 
I had some plastic teddy bear eyes laying around. These have this little plastic cap that is used to, to make sure they are snug. I modified one of the eyes, cut off a little piece, turned over the plastic, filled in the little hole at the center with super glue and baking soda. This is going to make it rock hard and allows you to work very fast. So I can immediately start applying green stuff. First I fill in the void between the two plastic components. Then I fill the entire model with green stuff. I use a burnishing tool to get all a little dense. To give it that typical hammered metal look. At the center I apply little half beads in several different sizes to represent the bubbling of the magic potion. Of course a cauldron needs a handle so I simply glued a thin piece of wire. Black primer and then a base coat of lead belcher. I also applied a little bit of sepia wash, but that was very subtle, not worth mentioning really. Khaki beige for the magic potion. A highlight of dead flesh. And a highlight on the bubbles of old white. I can then reach back to the Green Stuff World Bile. This is going to have the same effect, going to make everything nice and glossy, whilst giving a lovely sickly green yellow color. I also made a bunch of picture frames. These were simply printed out. And as you can see, I'm running out of ink, so you had this pretty cool effect. I pre-painted a bunch of balsa wood strips, and so, so it was easier to simply glue them down with a bit of PVA glue around the printed out picture, cut them out. And then we are going to reuse the glass technique from the previous video, but here I'm going to use it to represent the glass front of the picture. UV resin, apply a little drop, UV light, about a minute, and this is the result. I glue these into place on the wall. And then it's already time for a next project. The heads of fallen enemies in a glass jar. For this I started by making masters for the glass jars. This was 8mm wooden dowel. Cut out. And then I made a mold with silicon putty. And this is a very easy material to make molds with and works very fast. Simply mix the two components, then I rip little pieces to fill the spaces between the little jars to make sure I have everything nicely snug together, pop it into my Lego jig and simply press in to get a nice flat back. Now as you can see this didn't work 100%, however the molds itself worked great. I went into my bits box, grabbed a couple of heads, painted these up in simple colors with a sepia and a flesh wash. I'm going to embed these into the resin. A great tip to get rid of bubbles is to warm your resin into warm water. Mix everything thoroughly yet gently together. And then I pour in a small layer and allow this to dry for several hours. It is slow drying resin in my case. I use a little bit of excess resin at the side to see if it's hard enough to embed the little heads. And I simply push these in. Make sure to get them as nice and centered as possible. Allow this to dry for a couple more hours. And then simply fill up the molds to the top. This is the result. 
I really like how these come out. These give a ton of narrative options. I'm going to keep these separate and not going to glue these down as I can use these into loads of other games. I'm thinking Necromunda for example. Last thing to do was add a little bit of sepia and Agrax Earthshade wash. And then finally a layer of gloss varnish to make everything seem clear and awesome and cool. Last couple of projects, by request a little broom and then of course a container for the coal. The broom is a little plug of cocoa fiber wrapped around a piece of one millimeter styrene rod. I lay down a bunch of brown colors and this is the result, easy peasy. And then finally this is just a little barrel painted up in the same brown colors as I did all the furniture. Glued in a couple of stones, these stones were painted black and there you have a barrel full of coal. And that's it for this project. Thank you all very much for watching, please remember to like, subscribe, share, you know what to do by now. I see you soon for a new project here on Dark Matter Workshop. Till next year, bye.